I'm done. I'm hyper done with all my work, thanks to a great tool called Hyperdone. In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing an app that allows for simple, balanced productivity. I think oftentimes when you look at the workforce, it's not very balanced. Work-life balance is not a thing. But when you have great tools like Hyperdone, you're going to be able to have tools in your tool belt that allow you to be more balanced. Thanks to Hyperdone for sponsoring this video. So first of all, when we take a look at this application, we'll notice that it has a lot of the baseline qualities that are needed in a good productivity app. It has different views, like a weekly planning view, great calendar boards, the opportunity to collaborate with teammates. It has automations, time tracking, and visualizations to boot. Let's jump right into it. First of all, the pricing on this tool is that it's gonna be $9 a month per user on the yearly option, and then $11 per month on the monthly option. Not a big discrepancy between the two prices, so if you wanna try either, just start with a 14-day free trial, and then from there, after you get started with your free trial, you can see on the left here that this system works with workspaces, right? So if I press right here, I'm able to change the name of this workspace and then add different users with different roles attached to it. Now, if I were to create something here, I have three options. I have the ability to make another workspace, a folder, and another board. So essentially this allows for specific customization of the layout that you're gonna have on the sidebar here. So if I were to add another workspace and then just put rise productive, then I would be able to, if I wanted to create in general or create specifically, I could put this plus icon next to it and then this would add a folder. So let's do content and press create. And then within the folder, I would be able to press plus and then that would be a specific board name. So we have the option for two different types of boards in Hyperdone. We have the option for normal and calendar. So if we do normal, let's do videos and press create. And we add columns here. Essentially what this does is it allows us to have different segments. So if I do idea and then creating, you can see here there's an option for a background color. So let's do green and then I can go here and click on the name and then change it. So I'm gonna put it in the exact same order as what any of my boards would be for a content creation process for videos. Start it with gray, editing for orange and then rendered with purple. And that'd be the whole content creation process. But now I can go through here and first of all, really fun fact, I can go to the top left and invite other people. So our teammates will get an email. You can also invite other people that would be a guest to read only. So say you had a content workflow with somebody, you'd be able to share this with them without having to add them as a member, which is nice if you have to work with clients or anything like that. On the top right, you also can see that I have the ability to start a Pomodoro timer and if I allow this, it'll give me a notification. And then in the filter section, we have the ability to filter by users and tags, which we'll see in a second with the tasks. Now on the menu side, we also just have different board settings. It showcases the board members, and then it also keeps track of activities. There's specific reports as well to showcase the different tasks that we've done. So like a throughput chart and whatnot. And then you're able to actually export this as JSON or import it from Trello. Now when it comes to the board settings, you have the ability to add a time estimated picker units in Pomodoro and time worked picker units in Pomodoro. So if I add this, and you also have an API key, which is really nice for integrations. Now, if I click on this, you can see that I have the option to set a 25 minute timer. And then I have the option to be like, all right, is it a short break, long break, or a Pomodoro session? And if I press start, ends up setting it, rather than being a timer, as a stopwatch, ends up turning it the other direction. Now, if I wanted to add a new task here, it's really nice. You actually can, for example, let's pretend it's this content right here. It's hyperdone, simplified productivity. I then, if I wanted to, can press create. And after it's created, I'm allowed to add a description, which in here, as you can see, go over different features, talk about pricing, showcase value prop. The second that I do that, the description ends up being showcased right here that it has something within it. Now, clicking on it within there, I'm able to come back here and I'm able to create new tags. So for example, product review is a tag I can create. And then I can put that as red here and you'll see that the tag ends up showcasing on the top. Now, say the due date was today, it would then show the due date right here. And I could also, based on the Pomodoro session over here, I would be able to put Pomodoro time estimates. So how many different sessions? So let's say one session times 
a Pomodoro timer. Or we can look at the time log, for example, and add start and end times. So this is one of those few systems that actually has time tracking fully integrated into the task system. When you end up wanting to know how much time you're spending on work, it's better that it's just integrated into your task management, right? So why not use a tool like this that actually has it already for you? Now, another cool thing about this is you can obviously set add like an assign to, or you can upload attachments, comment on it, and add subtasks. So a subtask to this would be, it would be write script, record video, edit video, and lastly, render video. So if I were to check off some of these, you see that it crosses this out, and it then it puts a little, how many have been completed out of how many have not been completed. Personally, I think this is a great default layout for these cards, because if I end up moving these across, you can see that I'm almost using the top as a status column, and then I have the subtasks within here, specifically saying whether things are at what stage. I'm also able to see the tag as what it's specifically about, when it's due, and who it's assigned to. If I go here to filter now, and I pick filter by users, you can see that all I need to do is make another example one, which would be like, why Notion AI is worse than chat GPT. I have a different tag, for example, for something like app versus app, pick a color. And then after that, say I were to not assign it to me and make the due date next week, then I were to filter it to product review, apply filters, then it goes away. So very simple and easy to use filtering system. I can untick the filter right there. And a quick note here, in order to check this off, we have the ability to either press this mark is done right here, or we can go to the bottom and press mark is done. And then it'll get moved to the done section. A couple other things to note is the fact that in these boards, you're able to subscribe for notifications, move this around. So you have the choice to move it between a different board or a different column within the specific board you're in. So if I go to this weekly board one, then I'd have to pick a date column. So then if I copy this task URL, I'd be able to paste it out. And I can even copy this to move it to a different destination. So let's go to this weekly board to show you the features there. So I'm gonna copy this there. So then if we go back to boards and we go to the example weekly board, you'll see that it's pretty much the same system except it has a calendar feature to it, right? So on the top right over here, I'd be able to change the same board settings because the board settings are specific for the board you're talking about and the API keys are specific and the system's the exact same. We could add different due dates and whatnot, except when I add a due date here, just to point out, that shows when it's due. This is more showcasing when it would be done. So if I were example to have this due at the end of the week at a specific time, like 11 a.m., assigned to me. It would be due at the end of the week. However, it would be showcased that it needs to get done this week. Now, I can pick the different week here by going here, goes next, then I could do this and just scroll through it or go to today, which then brings us back to just seeing this view. Then if I press reset today view, it brings me back to the overall board. It's essentially the same type of board system, just with a, a calendar side to it. Now, there's some bulk actions here. So for example, if I press move all tasks, I then would be able to move all of them to a date like the 22nd. And that's a little bit easier than manually clicking and dragging them both, especially if you have a lot of them. I do have the option also, if I click on this, to either copy all the tasks or archive them. So this action will archive all the tasks from the column. Are you sure? The answer is yes, because I want it to be gone. And then once it is archived, and clears out out of the space. Now I wanna showcase something that's one of the cooler items here. So obviously with activities, we now see that there are some change logs that have happened here. But what I wanna show you is the fact that I can click on a report, press show done, and then it will give me a visual report of things that have gotten done, the amount of time spent on them based on different periods of time. I really like this because a lot of people don't necessarily know what they're doing from a what have I gotten done standpoint? And it's nice to just have that report showcase essentially a change log in a better way, especially with the time tracking capabilities here. A really cool thing is if I add some triggers and then first of all, we'd have to just say, yes, this is my time zone. What's awesome is this has automation built in. Now, a lot of apps just don't have automation. So the fact that this does 12 out of 10. For example, if I were to want to create recurring tasks, I can do trigger name and that would be write scripts. And that maybe would be on every week on Monday at 
8 and then AM. The action would be create task and then I can pick today, create task template and then now I can put write scripts, add a description saying write scripts for five different videos, have a tag be chosen for business and then I could maybe put a time estimate of one hour here. Have the subtasks just be script one and then just like do this five times to make it five subtasks. And then make sure it's assigned to me. And at the end of this whole process, then when I would press create, every week on Monday at 8 a.m., I'd have my recurring task set up. Now you also have other options. Obviously we can do every week, month, year, every day. We can also mark all the tasks that you have as done, but you can apply filters so that it's only for a specific day. So say you know yours are getting your work done and you moved anything at the end of the day that wasn't done over, what we can do is we can filter it to due date is a specific time or it's a specific tag. And then you have some other options for adding executed tasks as well. And you can even run these automations with the click of a button rather than needing to wait on the interval time. For such a simple looking app, I have to say, Hyperdon is one of the more feature packed options here for simple balanced productivity. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video and thank you for making it to the end of this video. Just like I'd like to thank you for checking out this video on how to improve your productivity even more.